departure kick is 716, On the 21st of July 1969, President Nixon phoned the crew of Apollo 11 on the moon. During that telephone conversation, he told the astronauts that Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. Nixon's bold statement feels counterintuitive because in daily life even near-Earth space seems remote to us. In reality, it's not that far away, only a couple of hundred kilometers above our heads. To put it in perspective, that is only a fifth of the distance between Brisbane and Sydney, or exactly the distance from Philadelphia to Baltimore. Still, for most humans, Apart from the 550 or so lucky individuals who flew into space, it does not seem to touch our daily lives. Or does it? Enter mobile phones, GPS navigation, weather satellites and the internet and this perspective is turned upside down. In order to make these technologies work properly, they are connected to an infrastructure network of hundreds of satellites orbiting the Earth. From this point of view, near-Earth orbit has become an integral part of our lives and is part of the human environment. But this infrastructure is also fragile in the face of humanity's latest efforts of environmental pollution, the creation of space debris. Since the early days of the space age, spent rocket stages, decommissioned satellites and rubbish of all kinds have contaminated near-Earth space. In effect, Humanity has lifted the industrial sphere into space. At present, more than 100 million pieces of human-made debris ranging in size from dead satellites to flecks of paint whiz around the Earth at incredibly fast speeds. This cloud of space junk poses a threat to our space infrastructure on which we now depend so much for navigation, communication, Earth surveillance and scientific and industrial data collection. Because even small fragments of a disintegrated spacecraft can seriously damage other satellites. It is also a threat to manned spaceflight because a small fragment of 10 centimeters could cause severe damage, endangering the lives of space crews. For this reason, the track of the International Space Station is actively monitored for large pieces of debris. But even planetary bodies are not safe from human efforts to junk up space. It started with the crew of Apollo 11, the first moon landing, who left a bag of rubbish on the moon. A serious littering offense? Not according to space historian Lisa Ruth Rand, who believes that this kind of rubbish will be a boon for future space archaeologists. And what about all these objects circling Earth? Does it mean that humankind has now extended its ecological footprint beyond the biosphere? Space historian Lisa Ruth Rand discusses these and other environmental space history related issues on episode 67 of the Exploring Environmental History podcast. Listen or download the podcast from the Environmental History Resources website.